you are too smart to not take care of your financial future. So I started off at the bottom. We never spend more than 30% of the limit. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Alexis Barber. I'm 22. I live in Brooklyn. I work full-time in big tech and I'm also a content creator. Today we are talking money. This is a tough topic because I'm someone who grew up in a low-income household and I also am someone who struggles with spending money a lot. So I started off at the bottom with this. When I turned 18, a family member opened a credit card in my name. So by the time I was applying for things, I had a super low credit score of 500 and I had to figure out how to get that back up. I also had to figure out how to manage money because I didn't know that people made six figures this young in life. To see that all that money when you grew up with nothing is a really big mindset shift that you have to make. A lot of these principles come from the book I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit. is all about automating your finances so that you don't have to think about it too much. If you are someone who is really anxious like I am, the best way to combat that is to not have to think about your money. And when you don't have to think about it as much, you don't get as anxious about it and therefore you don't necessarily self-sabotage. I'll start with my basic tenets of finance that I am following and then we will jump into how I actually manage my money from when it comes to my bank account to when I spend it. So there are a few financial tenets that you're definitely going to want to follow if you want to be financially successful. So first is to pay off all of your credit card debt and all of your other debt. So student loans are something that are a little bit different here so don't quote me on it but I personally believe you can make the minimum payment and just chill out. The other thing is credit card debt. So like I said, my credit score was 500 when I realized that I had what a credit score was. So I really had to make a lot of changes in order to bring that back up so that I could be a normal functioning adult. So what I first did was found all of the credit inquiries that were on my behalf. I submitted all of the disputes, um, got some things removed, and then in the cases where I couldn't get it removed, paid it off in full. Then I had to get a practice credit card where I essentially paid them $200. They gave me a credit card and then every month I would spend money on the credit card, pay it off in time in full, and then my credit score would grow. So the number one thing that I did not know about credit cards is that you should never spend more than 30% of the limit, okay? So if you have a $200 credit card where you have a $200 limit, you should never spend more or your statement balance should never say more than $60. Or check the days that your statement balance is reported to the credit bureaus. Never spend more than 30% pay off your debt from highest interest to lowest interest and you will be good with credit. Next is to build an emergency fund. So building an emergency fund is crucial and I can honestly say as someone who came from having like $30 in their bank account for many years, knowing that I have three months of expenses in a savings account somewhere is such a relief. I never felt that level of stability before and I say three to six months of expenses, that is what I mean. So I don't mean three to six months of your income, I mean three to six months of when you get fired from your job you can still pay your bills, get groceries, and pay your rent, and not be homeless. Keep that in a high yield savings account that you can test quickly, um, but not quickly enough to where you will spend it if you get the chance. So next up, you're going to want to invest in retirement, and then you're gonna to wanna to invest, period. Investing in retirement is something that you can do pretty easily if you have a corporate job because they will offer a 401k. Uh, depending on your job, they'll offer a different amount. The cool thing about working at Google is they offer a really great 401k match. So I max that out every year and I also max out my HSA account, but that is so that I can pay for medical procedures like my MS treatments and for Invisalign because you know we whiten the teeth over here. Uh, or not whitening, we're straightening the teeth make under $130,000 a year, you can max out a Roth IRA as well. So I think that max is like five or $6,000. Put that in a Roth IRA and then that will grow over time, which will be incredible. So you'll have a 401k and a Roth IRA so that when you are whatever, 50 side or something, it's gonna be super, super helpful for you. And you can also borrow against it at, pretty, at a pretty low penalty throughout your life too. So if you need to take money out of it, it's possible. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but that is a great way for you to just feel more comfortable with putting that much money. For me, it's like 
a ton of money every year into retirement. Next thing is to invest your money, period. So investments are important um, to me because they grow. Who would have thought? So if you invest your money in the stock market, the average returns are eight to 10% a year and inflation every year is something like three to 5% you invest your money you're you're making money on that money that you have as opposed to keeping that in a savings account where it's basically losing three to five percent every single year so when i learned that that's when i felt more comfortable investing and i've also branched out into cryptocurrency i would try to invest as much as possible every month um not at the expense of like your life or whatever but it's important that once you have that emergency fund in the bag Whatever you were putting towards that, find a good balance and put that into investments, whether it's through something like Elvis, where which is a woman-owned company, by the way, that you can invest money in, or if it's through something like Coinbase and you want to get into cryptocurrency. So those basic tenants are how I went about spending and managing my money. And so on a day to week to month to yearly basis, this is what I do when money gets deposited in my bank account. I have a budget spreadsheet that has everything that I'm going to get paid for the whole year sort of written out. And I have a plan which goes like this. So I get paid on average two times a month, sometimes three times a month. So one paycheck per month stays in my account and goes towards bills and rent. The other paycheck is the one that gets divvied out into all the different areas. First, I will transfer a certain amount to another checking account where, uh, which will be my spending checking account. So I either buy all my groceries and stuff through that account, or I pay my credit cards from that spending checking account. That way, all of my spending money is in one place so that I can't pull it from my bills checking account. I can't pull it from somewhere else without going through a hassle. So all I have is that much money for that month. And once it starts getting low, there's nothing I can do about it. So that's why I like having my, my spending money and my actual like living expenses money in two different places so that I don't think that I have more than I actually do. Then I transfer a set amount to my sinking funds. So sinking funds are very big financial thing that I learned about that really helped me when it came to managing money. Because to me, it's like if it's savings, then you don't want to touch it. But then it's like when it comes to buy something really big, you want to buy it. So like, what do you do? And so I would always get overwhelmed with wanting to make a big purchase because I had saved for it, but then it felt like the savings wasn't working. So sinking funds are a great way to do that. So in my third checking account, I will deposit a certain amount every month that goes towards plane tickets because I know I want to go home three, three to four times a year and travel if I'm going to out of the country. Gifts. So gifts for my boyfriend, gifts for my siblings, that all gets deposited in this account. So that way it doesn't feel like it's taking away from my spending money or my savings account. Finally, I have a set amount every month that goes towards investments, which is super helpful because then it's automated. I don't have to think about it and my money is growing for me. As I've mentioned before, I also have a small business bank account and that is where all my business expenses come out of. So that's something very important to keep separate. That is sort of how I manage my money every single month. If you just read this book and do all the steps that are in this book, you will be 100% fine. Some basic tenants that are important here are putting all your bills on auto pay. So no matter what, like everything gets paid on time and you never have that issue. And then for your credit cards, never spending more than 30%. Sets are a tool to build your financial future. They are not free money. And I grew up thinking they were free money. So if you were watching this and you or someone who had that same belief instilled into you, that is not the case. They are a tool. So I don't personally like, I don't know, they, they are something that can help because if you want to get like great points, that's wonderful, but I'm not that person. So definitely keep these things in mind, especially if you're starting out and getting a new job. You know, if you have any other financial questions and I cannot wait to help you, check out all the resources, spreadsheets, everything down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check me out on Instagram, TikTok, my podcast, Too Smart For This, and YouTube. And don't forget, you are too smart to not love yourself and you're too smart to not take care of your financial future. I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means. I still overspend. I still have messy accounts back and forth because sometimes I have to buy things for my business and it gets really messy. But at the end of the day, I do know that I have the tools within me to take control of my finances and live the life I want to live. So 